Welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziva Naurin. In today's bulletin, we will present up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Biden condemns white supremacy in campaign speech at church where black people were killed. Trump suggests that if re-elected, he would have Biden indicted. Lawmakers demand answers after Defense Secretary Austin delayed disclosing his hospitalization. Blinken brings U.S. push on post-war Gaza planning and stopping conflict to UAE and Saudi Arabia. First U.S. lunar lander in more than 50 years rockets toward the moon but suffers early glitch. Oman survives four nights of freezing temperatures after crash in mountains near L.A. Oppenheimer sweeps Golden Globes taking best drama, actor and director. Israeli strike kills an elite Hezbollah commander in the latest escalation linked to the war in Gaza. WHO cancels delivery of medical supplies in North Gaza. Bomb blast kills five cops in Pakistan. Twenty-five killed in bus truck crash in Brazil. Germany's World Cup winning captain and coach Beckenbauer dies at seventy-eight. And Tiger Woods announces split with Nike, leaving brand's ties to golf in doubt. You are listening to Headlines Now News in detail. Quoting black voters he needs to win a re-election, President Joe Biden on Monday denounced the poison of white supremacy in America, declaring at the site of a deadly racist church shooting in South Carolina that such ideology has no place in America, not today, tomorrow, or ever. Biden spoke from the pulpit of Mother Emmanuel AME Church, where in 2015, nine black parishioners were shot to death by the white stranger they had invited to join their Bible study. The Democratic president's speech followed his blunt remarks last Friday on the eve of the anniversary of the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol, in which he excoriated former President Donald Trump for, for glorifying rather than condemning political violence. At Mother Emmanuel, Biden said, the word of God was pierced by bullets of hate, propelled not just by gunpowder but by poison. White supremacy, he said, the view by some whites that they are superior to everyone else is a poison that for too long has haunted this nation. This has no place in America, not today, tomorrow or ever. Biden's campaign advisors and aides hope the visit successfully lays out the stakes of the race in unequivocal terms three years after the cultural saturation of Trump's words and actions while he was president. It's a contrast they hope will be paramount to voters in 2024. Former President Donald Trump on Monday suggested that if he is re-elected, he would have President Joe Biden indicted. A day before an appeals court hears arguments on his claim that presidential immunity protects him from prosecution for his role in the January 6 attack. In a post to his Truth Social platform early Monday, 
Trump said he plans to attend oral arguments on his presidential immunity claim before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit on Tuesday and claimed that it was his obligation as president to find voter fraud. Of course, I was entitled as president of the United States and commander-in-chief to immunity. I wasn't campaigning. The election was long over, he wrote. I was looking for voter fraud and finding it, which is my obligation to do, and otherwise running our country. Trump then argued that if his attempts to avoid prosecution over his efforts to overturn the 2020 election are unsuccessful, Biden shouldn't be entitled to presidential immunity either. If I don't get immunity, then crooked Joe Biden doesn't get immunity. Trump wrote before criticizing the Biden administration for the record number of migrants crossing into the U.S. southern border, its 2021 decision to pull troops from Afghanistan and baseless claims of Biden engaging in shady business practices with foreign countries. Joe would be ripe for indictment by weaponizing the DOJ against his political opponent, M.E. Joe has opened a giant Pandora's box. Trump wrote, as president, I was protecting our country and doing a great job of doing so. Just look around at the complete mess that crook Joe Biden has caused. The least I'm entitled to is presidential immunity on fake Biden indictments, he wrote. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has come under scrutiny from a growing number of congressional lawmakers who are demanding answers after the Defense Department delayed informing administration officials, Congress and the public about his hospitalization. The Pentagon waited three days after Austin arrived at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center to inform senior officials in the White House's National Security Council of Austin's condition, including that he had spent four days in the intensive care unit, a U.S. official previously confirmed. Austin's deputy, Kathleen Hicks, who was on vacation in Puerto Rico at the time, learned about his condition two days after she took over her duties, a senior defense official told on Sunday. Representative Ellis Stefanik of New York, the number four Republican in the House, on Monday called on Austin to resign. She decried the Pentagon's move to wait several days to notify administration officials about Austin's hospitalization as a shocking and absolutely unacceptable decision. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has opened his third day of meetings on an urgent Mideast diplomatic mission to prevent Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza from exploding into a broader regional conflict. Blinken was meeting Monday with United Arab Emirates leader Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed before traveling to Saudi Arabia for talks with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman aimed at enlisting the key Arab leaders in a push to not only keep the war contained but also prepare for post-conflict Gaza's future. With Sheikh Mohammed in Abu Dhabi, Blinken emphasized the importance of preventing further spread of the conflict and stressed continued U.S. commitment to securing lasting regional peace that ensures Israel's security and advances the establishment of an independent Palestinian state, the State Department said. Blinken arrived in Abu Dhabi from similar meetings in Qatar, Jordan, Turkey, and Greece, where he claimed at least modest success in his mission with pledges from those countries to consider contributing to the effort to plan for Gaza's reconstruction and governance once the fighting has ended. Gaza has been decimated by three months of Israeli bombardments that have sparked anger around the world for the massive damage and huge number of civilian casualties. The first U.S. lunar lander in more than 50 years rocketed into space Monday, but encountered a problem shortly after launch that may prevent it from reaching the moon. The spacecraft, developed by a private company called Astrobotic Technology, lifted off at 2.18 a.m. ET from 
Cape Canaveral, Florida on the United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan rocket. After safely separating from its booster, the lander encountered an issue that prevented it from achieving a stable sun-pointing orientation, the company said in an update. The spacecraft needs to keep its solar panels facing the sun to charge its onboard battery, which company officials said is currently reaching operationally low levels. The lander is on a roundabout route to the moon, with the company aiming to touch down on the lunar surface February 23. Not long after publicizing the anomaly, the company said it performed an unspecified, improvised maneuver to reorient the spacecraft's solar panels to face the sun. We are now charging the battery, Astrobotics said in a mission update. The company did not elaborate on how the glitch may affect the remainder of the lunar mission, if at all. Astrobotics said that the likely cause of the malfunction was a propulsion failure, adding that further updates would be issued as more data is obtained and analyzed. The Peregrine mission represents a new chapter for the commercial space industry, launching private companies on a space race to make deliveries for NASA and other customers. A driver who survived four nights of cold and freezing temperatures in mountainous terrain near Los Angeles was rescued and hospitalized Sunday, a sheriff's official said. The woman's exact condition and injuries were unavailable, but Los Angeles County Sheriff's Lieutenant William Philpott said she was stable. The woman told rescuers she went up the road in her Ford Ranger pickup truck sometime Wednesday. He said. Philpott said deputies were looking into the possibility the driver served to avoid striking a deer. She was discovered inadvertently by a Los Angeles County firefighter who happened to be in the area and noticed the pickup over the side of Mount Baldy Road near its three-mile marker about 12.30 p.m. Sunday, he said. Rescuers pulled her from the wreckage and airlifted her to Pomona Valley Hospital Medical Center Philpott said. The Los Angeles County Fire Department did not immediately respond to a request for more information. Oppenheimer, one of the biggest box office hits of 2023, has won multiple Golden Globes as Hollywood kicked off its annual awards season. Irish actor Killian Murphy took home best male actor for his portrayal of scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer in the film about the development of the atomic bomb. The film was named Best Drama, Christopher Nolan the Best Director and Robert Downey Jr. the Best Male Supporting Actor. I was in the hands of a visionary director, a master, Murphy said as he accepted the Golden Globe on Sunday night. Indigenous actor Lily Gladstone, a firm favorite, won Best Actress in a Drama Film for her role in Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon. The gothic comedy drama Poor Things, from celebrated Greek director Yorgos Lanthimos, was named Best Film Comedy or Musical, and its sister Emma Stone, Best Actress in a Film Comedy or Musical. The Globe ceremony marks the start of Hollywood's annual award season, which culminates with the Oscars on March 10. Overhauled after a diversity and ethics scandal in 2021, the Globes recognized the best in film and television and brought the stars together for the first time after six months of strikes by actors and writers in 2023. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. world continuously revolving around various events every minute every second something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jadu TV, Radiant IPTV, 
worldwide Jagubid network and horizon satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for global updates. An Israeli air strike killed an elite Hezbollah commander Monday in southern Lebanon, the latest in an escalating exchange of strikes along the border that have raised fears of another Mideast war, even as the fighting in Gaza exacts a mounting toll on civilians. The strike on an SUV killed a commander in a secretive Hezbollah force that operates along the border, according to a Lebanese security official who spoke on condition of anonymity in keeping with regulations. Hezbollah identified the slain fighter as Wissam al-Tawil without providing details. He is the most senior militant in the armed group killed since Hamas October 7 attack into southern Israel triggered all-out war in Gaza and lower intensity fighting between Israel and Hezbollah which has escalated since an Israeli strike killed a senior Hamas leader last week in Beirut. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is back in the region this week, appears to be trying to head off a wider conflict. The World Health Organization said it had been compelled to cancel a mission to bring medical supplies to northern Gaza on Sunday after failing to receive security guarantees. It was the fourth time WHO had to call off a planned mission to bring urgently needed medical supplies to al the hospital and the central drug store in northern Gaza since December 26. It said, it has now been 12 days since we were last able to reach northern Gaza. The WHO office in the occupied Palestinian territories wrote on the ex-social media platform. Heavy bombardment, movement restrictions, and interrupted communications are making it nearly impossible to deliver medical supplies regularly and safely across Gaza, particularly in the north. The delivery plant on Sunday, WHO said, had been designed to sustain the operations of five hospitals in the northern part of the enclave. A bomb blast in northwest Pakistan near the Afghan border killed five police officers on polio vaccination guard duty and wounded more than 20. The latest in a series of attacks by militants ahead of the February 8 national elections. The Pakistan Taliban, an umbrella group of militants also known as Tehriki Taliban Pakistan, claimed responsibility in a statement sent to Reuters. The blast hit a truck full of police on their way to guard a polio vaccination drive in the Baju tribal district, police official Kashif Zulfikar said. Militants in Pakistan often target polio vaccination teams, believing the immunization effort is a Western tool to spy on them and make Muslims infertile. The TTP has been waging a war against the state for years, seeking to overthrow the government and replace it with a harsh brand of Islamic rule. The militants have ramped up their attacks since they revoked a ceasefire with the government last year. At least 25 people have been killed after a tourist bus collided with a truck in Bahia State in northeastern Brazil, a state firefighter said. Military firefighters responded to an incident that left 25 dead near the municipality of Gavio, about 155 miles from the capital of Bahia State, Salvador. Five people were also injured in the accident Sunday night, according to Brazilian press reports, which also published images of the twisted fuselage of the truck. The cause of the accident is still unknown. The bodies of the victims have been handed over to police for identification, the firefighters said. The mayor's office of Jacobina, a city close to the accident, declared three days of official mourning and is preparing a collective wake for the victims. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. 
world continuously revolving around various events every minute every second something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with sky network worldwide jadu tv radiant ip tv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your fist welcome back to millennium news hour now it's time for business news Today's New York stock close price is 16,715.71. The NYSE composite is decreased by 2.94 points or 0.02%. Tokyo stock close price is 33,377.42. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 89 point. 13 points or 0.27 percent. Shanghai stock close price is 2,887.54. The Shanghai index is decreased by 41.65 points or 1.42 percent. Hong Kong stock close price is 16,224.45. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 310.88 points or 1.88%. Bombay stock close price is 71,355.22. The Sensex index is decreased by 670.88. 93 points or 0.93 percent. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Germany's Franz Beckenbauer, one of soccer's greatest players who captained his country to World Cup glory in 1974 and won the tournament again as manager in 1990, has died at the age of 78. His family said in a statement on Monday, Beckenbauer bestrode the sport as player, coach, pundit and administrator for more than half a century and was widely admired globally, with messages of sympathy pouring in from across the world on Monday. It is with deep sadness that we announce that my husband and our father, Franz Beckenbauer, passed away peacefully in his sleep yesterday, Sunday, surrounded by his family. Read a statement from his family. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said on X, World Cup winner as player and coach, Franz Beckenbauer was one of the greatest footballers in Germany and for many Der Kaiser also because of the excitement for German football he created for generations. We will miss him. My thoughts are with his family and friends. Beckenbauer was a classy, dominant presence on the pitch for West Germany and Bayern Munich in the 1960s and 70s, using a calmness on the ball and effortless distribution that marked his midfield performances to virtually invent the central defensive sweeper role, or libero, where he found most success. Tiger Roots announced Monday he is ending his long-time partnership with Nike, leaving the brand's future in the fast-growing sport in doubt. In a post on his social media feed, Woods thanked the iconic brand for their 27-year partnership alongside a photo of himself, his mother and Nike founder Phil Knight. 
Nike released a statement confirming the split. For over 27 years, we have had the honor to partner with Tiger Woods, one of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen, it said. Throughout the course of our partnership, we have witnessed, along with the rest of the world, how Tiger not only redefined the sport of golf but broke barriers for all of sport. We watched him set records, challenge conventional thinking, and inspire generations of people around the globe. We are grateful to have been a part of it. We wish him the best in the future, it said. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Biden condemns white supremacy in campaign speech at church where black people were killed. Trump suggests that if re-elected, he would have Biden indicted. Lawmakers demand answers after Defense Secretary Austin delayed disclosing his hospitalization. Blinken brings U.S. push on post-war Gaza planning and stopping conflict to UAE and Saudi Arabia. First U.S. lunar lander in more than 50 years rockets toward the moon but suffers early glitch.
Oman survives four nights of freezing temperatures after crash in mountains near LA. Oppenheimer sweeps Golden Globes taking best drama, actor and director. Israeli strike kills an elite Hezbollah commander in the latest escalation linked to the war in Gaza. WHO cancels delivery of medical supplies in North Gaza. Bomb blast kills five cops in Pakistan. Twenty-five killed in bus truck crash in Brazil. Germany's World Cup winning captain and coach Beckenbauer dies at 78. And Tiger Woods announces split with Nike, leaving brand's ties to golf in doubt. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel, and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all Act TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.